Hello everyone, this is Zook, and today I'm going to be drawing an infested Terran, or an infested Marine. Before I get into that though, I have one little thing to say. Please watch these videos in 720p full screen, because in 360 and generally in the small video format, there are a lot of details that you can see, like the camera I'm recording with does have a limit when it comes to picking up things. It's just a regular webcam recording 720. So, you know, it it's not a professional camera. It won't pick up everything at a huge distance. So just watch the videos in full screen and you know, there you will notice a lot of details that aren't picked up in 360. Just because I've gotten a lot of complaints on my last video for lack of detail, but I'm pretty sure that most people don't even bother to to go full screen on them. So obviously there are some things that you're gonna miss. But anyway, back to the drawing. Um, the infested marine or infested Terran is a unit that's been present in StarCraft since the beginning. In StarCraft One, it used to be um, spawned by an infested command center, which I thought was a much cooler concept than uh, than what it is now. I mean. It's just a regular spawned unit now. But before in StarCraft 1, you actually had to take your queen, damage a command center, infest it, fly it back to your base, and uh, may, uh, f produce these units. And they were very fast-moving units. They're basically like the what you would call a baneling now. They used to explode for like 500 damage, and they used to move really fast. So they were uh, they were quite cool, and the cop concept in itself was was interesting. You know, stealing a building from another race and using it. We used to do a lot of that in StarCraft One. It's it's a shame that they took that out of the game. You could actually capture other people's uh, drones as a Protoss player and attack them with your own hydralisks and make your own hatcheries and stuff. So yeah, it was fun in, in long big game hunter games. But yeah, anyway, in StarCraft 2, the infested Terran is spawned by the infester um, from a infested swarm egg, I think it's called, that he lays. So, uh, until now, I didn't know how strong of a unit this actually is, but it has more damage and more HP than a marine, than a regular marine. It has 50 damage and, no, 50 life and 8 damage, and a marine has 45 life without combat shields and 6 damage. So it's quite a strong unit, and I appreciate anyone that uses it because it can be really devastating for um, for your mineral line if if you don't have detection, which a lot of people don't really bother with nowadays, especially in free for all games, which I I personally enjoy. But yeah, this drawing took about four hours and forty minutes, mostly because there are just so many organic elements on uh, on this character that. They just, they're not hard to draw, but they take a long time. Probably because I do it to myself. Like, the, the way I draw these is I I press down as light as possible. Like, seriously, as barely touching the paper. And then, from that point, I look for textures that I can work with. Like, I look for, for lines that could look like, uh, you know, connective tissue or flesh or, you know, overlapping uh, flaps of skin or something. So they're supposed to be very random, like I don't have a method, I don't have a final image of what this character looks like because if if you start with something like that, especially when drawing things that already exist, then sure it's good on one side, but on the other hand you might end up with something that looks very rigid like a common problem that I see with people that send me drawings for, for criticism is that they seem extremely rigid like they, they don't have like that natural organic feel even with characters that aren't as gross and as this and disgusting as this one but with like normal you know military type characters or whatever they're all very stiff so i try to avoid that by by just going for very random textures and working from from scratch and trying to to find something that would have a flow you know that's why I enjoy drawing organic things because there's it does just doesn't get more random than this and random things can sometimes look very well like you'd be surprised how many things on this character and how many like textures and stuff are completely an accident you know just happy accidents I don't really ever go for for something pre-planned 
maybe if I make like two identical limbs and one turns out a certain way I would plan the second one to sort of resemble the first one but even then I, I try to change it up a bit and not, and not do the, the exact same thing because as I mentioned before it's, it's harder to actually replicate something than to create at least in my case because you gotta pay attention to a lot of small things that happen by accident and it's harder to to draw them intentionally so now I'm getting to work on the the clawed hand <coughs> it has a lot of little claws coming out of it and I just tried to improvise as much as possible on 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 these tentacles here I even made them completely different from each other because you know and it and themselves they don't really have a purpose except they're just you know the aftermath of the infestation so why not play with them a bit I'm just drawing the second little claw there and uh just doing the little piece of metal or his forearm that's showing from behind the uh, the tentacles and stuff. Uh, I'm just drawing a lot of uh, connective tissue there and overlapping flesh just to show that the infection is still spreading. And now I'm working on the uh, three main claws of his hand. <coughs> Again with these, I just shade them very lightly and then darken the areas that I consider would be would look good in shadow and you know, sometimes I can stumble across things such as little holes or scratches that I can accentuate to make it look uh, better <laughs> there's really no other word to describe it also most of the time I start from from the area that would normally be shadowed you know like if it's a cylinder I would start shading at the core shadow and work my way up to the highlights and then you know, I sit there for a second, look at it, and decide which which areas I should like texturize and accentuate. Now I'm working on the uh, on his right hand, and I decide to go for a completely different texture on the tentacle. It sort of looks like a, a colon or an intestine here, and it came out really well and seems to fit the whole thing because. Yeah, Zerg aren't really don't really have a purpose, especially when they infest something. It do, it doesn't really it doesn't seem to have any logic sense. So you know why not just randomize it as much as possible for the sake of practicing textures and you know, just having fun with it. Just doing the little uh, secondary tentacle spreading on his on his arm there and he still carries a rifle as you well know so I decide to make a lot of web-like uh, structures uh, to show that the infection is sort of still flowing ar along its arm and it's gonna you know, engulf the entire thing soon I'm sure that's not the case but it doesn't matter you know I, I can make up my own story for the character if I want to and it's always good to have a story for your characters, you know. Like if there's, if you don't think there's a reason for something, find a reason, and it, that'll make it easier to to accept and to you know develop as you draw. If you just draw random shit without having any sort of purpose for them or thinking about them, then they're not going to turn out that well. But you know, it's all about getting involved in what you're doing. You know, if I say like, "Oh, look, this uh, tentacle thing is going into his arm here," so I'm gonna make like uh, some little flaps of skin covering it to show that you know there's as a purpose for it, or this thing shoots poison, or that thing is supposed to be used as a you know tentacle with suction cups to just grab stuff that he can't shoot. You know, it's all uh, all concept designers have this you know rooted inside their education so to say they they always have a story for every little thing they uh, they draw and it's very useful you know, it's very it allows you to to draw better if you if you have find a purpose for stuff before i i had no like story backstory either for characters i just drew whatever i saw but as time passes and as you get better at it you start actually thinking about things while you're doing it and not just focusing on the actual task saying like, hmm what could this piece us be used for and you know let me find a logical connection for this uh, tentacle or claw you know, 
with or like tie it to other elements in the drawing <coughs> and stuff just becomes to becomes easier and starts to make sense and when something makes sense you know it's just you know typical psychology it's easier to understand if you, you know, it's easier to accept and to develop on if you actually understand what it is because people they're scared of the unknown so when something doesn't make any sense you sort of approach it with caution but yeah, I'm uh, I'm just finishing the leg down. <coughs> sort of looks like a uh, like an ultralisk uh, you know, foot with uh, two huge claws there, and just finishing up the details. So that was about it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I think it came out pretty well. I'll see you next time. Bye.